Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, viewers. Thank you for joining us this lovely morning. It is the day the Lord has made. Uh, today being Friday, the 10th of March, 2023. And I'm sure that according to the Word of God, it's going to be a blessed day for each and every one of us. We shall indeed rejoice and be glad in it. No matter what the situation might be around you, I speak to you by the Word of God that today being the Lord's day, God will meet you at the point of your need and will give you a reason to rejoice in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining us in today's Daily Fountain Devotional. Um, the text before us this morning is Leviticus 27, 1 to 25. And the topic that we'll be considering as we meditate on God's word, is the believer's words. The believer's words. The text again is Leviticus 27, 1 to 25. If you have your Bible, you please read with me as we read the text. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, when a man shall make a singular vow, the person shall be for the Lord by thy estimation, and thy estimation shall be of the male from twenty years old, even unto sixty years old, even thy estimation shall be fifty shekels of silver, after the shekel of the sanctuary. And if it be a female, then thy estimation shall be thirty shekels. And if it be from five years old, even unto twenty years old, then thy estimation shall be of the male twenty shekels, and for the female ten shekels. And if it be from a month old, even unto five years old, then thy estimation shall be of the male five shekels of silver, and for the female thy estimation shall be three shekels of silver. And if it be from sixty years old and above, if it be a male, then thy estimation shall be fifteen shekels, and for the female, ten shekels. But if he be poorer than thy estimation, then he shall present himself before the priest, and the priest shall value him according to his ability that vowed shall the priest value him. And if it be a beast, wherefore men bring an offering unto the Lord, all that any man giveth of such unto the Lord shall be holy. He shall not alter it, nor change it, a good for a bad, or a bad for a good. And if he shall at all change beast for beast, then it and the exchange thereof shall be holy. And if it be any unclean beast of which they do not offer a sacrifice unto the Lord, then he shall present the beast before the priest. And the priest shall value it, whether it be good or bad. As thou valuest it, who are the priest, so shall it be. But if he will at all redeem it, then he shall add a fifth part thereof unto thy estimation. And when a man shall sanctify his house to be holy unto the Lord, then the priest shall estimate it, whether it be good or bad. As the priest shall estimate it, so shall it stand. And if he that sanctified it will redeem his house, then he shall add the fifth part of the money of thy estimation unto it and it shall be his. And if a man shall sanctify unto the Lord some part of a field of his possession, then thy estimation shall be according to the seed thereof, and armor of barley shall 
be valued at 50 shekels of silver. If he sanctify his field from the year of Jubilee, according to thy estimation, it shall stand. But if he sanctify his field after the Jubilee, then the priest shall reckon unto him the money according to the years that remain, even unto the year of the Jubilee, and it shall be abated from thy estimation. And if he that sanctify the field will in any wise redeem it, then he shall add the fifth part of the money of the estimation unto it, and it shall be assured to him. And if he will not redeem the field, or if he have sold the field to another man, it shall not be redeemed any more. But the field, when it goeth out in the jubilee, shall be holy unto the Lord as a field devoted. The possession thereof shall be the priests. And if a man sanctify unto the Lord a field which he had bought, which is not of the fields of his possession, then the priest shall reckon unto him the worth of thy estimation, even unto the year of the jubilee. And he shall give thine estimation in that day as a holy thing unto the Lord. In the year of the jubilee, the field shall return unto him of whom it was bought, even to him to whom the possession of the land did belong. Verse 25. And all the estimations shall be according to the shekel of the sanctuary. Twenty jeras shall be the shekel. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for the reading of your word. Please speak to us again this morning. Help us again to understand the power that our words portend. Give us the grace, King of glory, to resemble you, even in our spoken words and the vows we make to you. In Jesus Christ's name we have prayed. Amen. We are looking at the believer's word. The weight, the power, your word and my word as a believer carries. Indeed, words are powerful. Your words reveal who you truly are or of what stuff you are made. A man cannot be separated from his words. The Bible puts it this way. Out of the abundance of a man's heart, his mouth speaks. God and his word are one and the same. Even our salvation, if you remember Romans 10 verse 10, is sealed by our confession. It says that out of the heart, from the heart a man believes. So even our salvation is sealed by our confession. No matter how much we believe in our heart, a point comes in our life where we have to confess with our mouth. And that is when our salvation is sealed. So truly, our dedication to God is measured in my ability and your ability to be faithful in keeping our words, in keeping our vows, be it to God or to men. The passage we read in Leviticus again shows the power of the spoken words, of the vows we make. If you look at verses 1 to 8, Everything and everyone, anything and anyone at any age can be dedicated to God by means of a special vow, by means of words spoken with all seriousness and belief. In verses 9 to 13, animals, even animals, beasts, can be dedicated to God by means of a special vow. In verses 14 and 15, a house, a building, your house, can also be dedicated to God by your commitment to God through your words. You can set your house apart by the words you speak, the words you are committed to, saying that this, my house, is only for the glory of God. Nothing that defiles will be found in it. Okay? From verses 16 to 21, a family... A family land or a field can be consecrated to God and for the use of advancing God's kingdom. And we, if we put our minds back to the Acts of the Apostles, we saw that in the time of the early apostles, 
people gave up their lands, they sold their lands, they brought the proceeds to God, uh, to the church, for the advancement of the purpose of the kingdom of God. In verses 22 to 25, likewise, a field that you bought with your money, that is not part of a family land that you inherited, can also be dedicated to God. And all of this by means of your word, by means of a special vow, your commitment you made with your word. So we are seeing that the, the words you speak, they are powerful, as you cannot be separated from your words. And this draws our attention to the need of being careful in what we speak, the vows we make, and to ensure that we keep those vows. In fact, if you look at verses 23 and 28, it states there categorically that once a thing, a property or a person, is dedicated to the Lord by means of a vow, that is a covenantal pronouncement, that thing or person is set apart to the Lord, becomes holy to the Lord. This is the power of the believer's word. Vows are written or spoken commitment or promises and pledges we make with God or men, and I can even add with ourselves, for a good reason or benefit, and we are expected at all times to be faithful to our words. Some Christians often make vows to dedicate something or someone to God. I'm reading from our manual now. Some make vows in cases of challenges like barrenness, illness, in times of danger, in times of war, in times of need. We even have vows made before, during, and after marriages. Vows are a good means by which we attract God's attention, mercy, and favor to meeting our needs, particularly when we fulfill those vows. Vows can also be likened to as a seed or to a seed that are sown to the ground in faith, of which when you water it, by doing those things, by fulfilling those vows, you will reap the benefits. And joy and bountiful fruits will be your portion. But when we make a vow and we fail to water it, to nurture it by fulfilling them, then those vows become wasted efforts. The seed dies and all our energy and time spent become wasted. Hannah in the Bible, it's one example that readily comes to mind when we talk about the power of the believer's word, the power of vows. You recall that Hannah, in her time of challenge, when she was barren, her rival Penina was giving birth to children and actually was tormenting her life in the home. Hannah took her case to God and she made a difficult vow. But the Lord answered her cry and gave her baby Samuel. And notwithstanding how difficult the vow was to give your son, your first son, your only son at that time, to God, to serve him away from you, Hannah fulfilled her vow. But when she sowed that seed, when she fulfilled that vow, it opened the door for other children to come in. Samuel actually became a minister, a man whose words did not fall to the ground because the mother was a woman of integrity. A woman who kept to her vow. A woman whose uh, verbal commitments to God she cherished. She didn't take for granted. So the question as we continue in this devotion this morning. I know quietly in your heart you'll be checking. Do you keep to your words? Are you a man or a woman of integrity? Are you someone who is predictable by the words you speak? Are you a husband that your wife can vouch for? If my husband say he's, he's going this way, he's actually going that way. Are you a woman your husband can vouch for? That you are a, a woman of integrity, a woman that keeps to her words. Or are there vows you have made, whether they are married to vows, whether as a student, you 
got admission to a school and you were, you had to pass through some oath, you took the oath, you made some vow to be a good student, a law-abiding student. But alas, because of one challenge or the other, you have broken your vows. You have gone away. You have become wild. Okay, you have jettisoned the promises you made, both to God and to the school where you are schooling. Are you a man of integrity? We must all arise from this devotion this morning as we hear the Lord speaking to us to rise up, to repent from every sin that we have been committing of not fulfilling the words we have spoken, the promises we have made, even to our children. We must rise to become men and women, believers who keep to our words. Now, some of the benefits of keeping our words include, number one, it makes you more dedicated, more committed to God and God's kingdom. When a man keeps to his word and God who never fails reacts and blesses you, it makes you more committed. It makes you to give yourself more. When you begin to reap the testimonies of faithfulness in keeping your word, and you begin to see the hand of God in your life, you want to try God more. You want to even make more vows. You want to dedicate yourself more to God and to his service. So it makes us more dedicated to God. Number two, it makes you experience more of God's miracles, interventions, and his presence in your life. When you are a man who keeps to your words, when you are a woman who keeps to the vows you make to the Lord, then you will see that you will, begin, you will be experiencing more of God's miracles, His interventions, His presence in your life uh, daily. Thirdly, it gives you joy and peace and satisfaction when you are a man who keeps your word. When you are a believer who is a believer with integrity, who keeps to the vows that you make to God and to men, you have joy. You see, when you fulfill your vow, there is this joy that flows within. There is this release, this relief. You are free within you. And you are joyful that you could do that. You have peace. You are not uh, troubled in your heart. You are not perturbed. I have not done this. I have not uh, done what I promised. You are not agitated at all. You have peace of mind. And you are satisfied that you could do such good thing as what you have promised. And very importantly, the number four uh, in my listing this morning as part of the benefits we gain from keeping our word is that you resemble God. God never fails in keeping his words. If you look at far back as Genesis chapter 3, after man fell and God came and spoke, he said the seed of the woman will bruise the head of the serpent. Times came and rolled by, and it's as if that promise will not be fulfilled. But God never forgets. At the fullness of time, the seed of the woman who was Christ Jesus, he came. And actually, the head of the serpent was crushed. Man was delivered from the bondage that disobedience brought us into. And we were free. Again, if you look at the story of God's work with the Israelites, you remember God promised Abraham even before the people of Israel were into captivity in Egypt. God has spoken to Abraham beforehand that the people of Israel will be in captivity for so, so, so number of years. But at the fullness of time, they will all come out. God always keeps to his promises. He kept that promise. And by a strong and a mighty hand, he brought out the people of Israel from the hands of their tax masters. Even when Pharaoh was questioning, who is that your God that will not let you go? God's word came true. God's word will never fall to the ground. God fulfilled his promises. So when you are a child of God, a believer, a Christian who keeps to his words, then you resemble God. There are also dangers of not keeping to our words. Number one is that you attract God's absence, God's disfavor. God withdraws his presence from you. 
Number two is that you lose your integrity. You become unpredictable. People around you may not even take you for your words. They say that is, the how, that is how you, you babble with words. You are not serious with the words you speak. You lose your integrity. You lose your standing as a child of God. Number three is that you bring shame to God and to the body of Christ. You know, we have situations uh, today where people come and they make vows, they make promises, even in the church. They donate or they make pledges. And when people come to, to them to redeem their pledge, you hear people say things like, it is not, it is not <laughs> you I made pledge to, it is God I made pledge to. Let God come himself to redeem the pledge from me. Huh. It's a terrible thing. If a man will want God to come himself to redeem the pledge you made with your mouth, it's a terrible thing. And we have seen in some cases some people become oppressed by the devil. They begin to lose favor with God because they were unable to keep the vows they made. In conclusion this morning, as much as vows are very powerful, and are a means to attracting God's blessing and favor into our lives, as we have seen from the scriptures. We want to encourage you not to be hasty in making vows. There are vows that you must think through before you make them. There are vows that you must prayerfully engage yourself in before you make them. You might even have to seek counsel where necessary and if possible before you make some vows. Because when you make vows in the haste and you are unable to fulfill them, you become like a fool. Actually, you attract God's judgment when you are unable to keep your vows. The problem with many homes, many marriages today, is traceable to the breaking of marital vows. The lack of faithfulness in spouses keeping to their words the words they committed themselves to, to love, to submit to one another, to cherish each other. When we fail in keeping these promises we've made with to our spouses, even to our children, it breaks the hedge. The serpent comes in and it begins to bite. It begins to cause lots and lots of rancor, lots and lots of trouble, uh, problems, quarrels in the homes. May the Lord help you and I to be men and women who keep to our words. Again, if you look at our country, Nigeria, today, and some other nations that are facing backwardness, stagnation, huge and humongous debts, loads of crises, one could trace this crisis to the lack of the fulfillment of the words the leaders that have been elected to offices made maybe during their times of campaign. During campaign times, they make lofty words, lofty promises. But at last, when they get into office, so many of them forget the vows. They, some can even claim that it was not me that said it. So, so many nations are in crisis today because their leaders, whether in the presidency or in the houses of representatives, those who have been elected into offices, have failed in keeping to their words. Some of them grow to become selfish and nepotistic in their attitudes. And as such, they lose the fear of God and also lose the favor of God. But we are praying that a new set of leaders that will come on board to manage the fears of this great nation will be men and women of integrity who fear the Lord and will work for our common growth and development keeping to their campaign promises, not drifting into selfishness or nepotism. Finally, this morning, when you gave your life to Christ, you remember, you pledged to deny yourself, to take up your cross daily and to follow him, whether in season or out of season. Have you been faithful to that pledge? Have you been faithful to your walk with God? that you committed yourself to, that you said that from today, Jesus will be my personal Savior and Lord. How committed have you been? How faithful have you been in keeping to that word? 
I am praying that if you are hearing me this morning and you have backsliding or you have jettisoned those promises and you are living anyhow, living carelessly, you will go back to your vows. You will go back to your words and begin to walk with God in righteousness and in holiness. May the Lord strengthen us, even in times like this, to be men and women who are men of integrity, who keep to our vows. May the Lord help us not to be hasty in vows. And whatever vows we have made or will make, may the Lord give us strength to be men and women who keep to our vows. Let us pray. Lord, we ask for your grace again this morning upon our lives to be men and women of integrity. We want to ask for forgiveness in any way we have sinned in the past by not keeping to our words. Lord, please forgive us. Purge us this morning and give us grace to rise from this devotion to Lord, be committed in keeping to the vows we make to you or to our fellow men or even to ourselves that we might resemble you and attract your favor upon our lives. Lead us today in the power of your spirit and give us reasons to testify of your faithfulness. In Jesus Christ's name we have prayed. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.